Hey guys! Oh, it didn't let me do a little, uh, didn't let me do a little title. <laughs> so here I am without a title. Anyone joining? Hi! This is the, uh, I'm using my collage kit today to do some collaging. I'm going to make some collage cards. And I've just made a little cup of mint tea, which looks really suspect. You can't see it, but in the bottom of there is this unsmiley face, <laughs> like an unhappy face. Um, this little mug, I can't tip it and show you the side because I'll pour the tea out. But it is made for me by my my friend Heidi Plant, and it's so cute. And when you get to the bottom of it, it's got a little sad face. I guess sad because you finished your tea. But yes, yeah, so I was just painting my nails. One of oh hi guys, just getting some waves to you guys joining. I always like to try and paint my nails before the lives because you get to look at them all the time. But also, even when I'm doing crafting myself, I feel like this makes me feel really put together. I don't know about you, but if I've got gorgeous nails, then it's like ah, oh, I'm really got got it going on, and I feel like I'm in charge. So <laughs> I always like to try and paint them before I do anything. I give it a little go anyway. Um, and so today I'm going to be working with my collage kit. I'm going to make uh, a couple of Christmas cards, I think. The kit itself has got loads of different colours of um, uh, sticky paper in it to collage with. I'm just showing my nails, like oh, um, it's got sticky paper to collage with. It's not particularly Christmassy. It's all different colours, but I'm going to have a go at doing some Christmas cards today. So I'll do a little uh, tour of this collage kit. And it's actually a collage card making kit, but you can make anything you like with this. I mean, you could do little art pieces and things like that. And as usual in the kit, there's a lovely little intro to the craft from me, a bit of encouragement. It's like, you are the artist. I say that quite a lot in my kits, don't I? I love that. You're free to create whatever cutout drawings you might like with your sticky paper. If you feel you need a bit of a jump start with a guide, there's also a page of shape templates, and that's what I'm going to be working from today, um, to cut out and draw around to make all of the compositions shown here and more. So in the kit, you get your instructions, you get your little confidence note, and then also it gives you, let's see if I can back up a bit and you, you guys can see it a bit more. It gives you um, all different designs that you can make from the kit. So. This is what, I'm going to be wrecking my nails, look, I can see it already. These uh, shapes here, you cut them all out and you use them as stencils, but you can cut them out and use them if you weren't doing your own designs, but this is what they can compose into. And you can see how they can kind of be used in lots of different ways. And um, florals, a big vase of flowers, lots of people love this lady with the heart, I might have a go at doing her, little Christmassy version of her. But even rainbows and abstract shapes, all sorts of things. Um, so this is what the designs you can put, can put together with your, um, oh hi Cindy's in, um, these are the designs you can put together with your kit, but you could do anything you wanted, and I might do a bit of freestyling as well. Um, but these are all the shapes that you can make with the kit, and inside the collage kit, anyone who's just joined, this is what we're doing, we're doing a little tour of the Market Girl collage kit. Oh yeah, look, just wrecked the nail, <laughs> this is great. Um, so inside the collage kit, as well as all that kind of motivation and um, all that instruction, you get a super sweet little pair of stalk scissors. This is what they look like unwrapped. How cute are they? Historically, they're embroidery scissors to cut little bits of thread and stuff, but they're fantastic for getting all those little kind of tiny snippy bits of collage. So you get some of those. You get a little envelope with some sticky dots, some sticky tape, and some bigger starburst stickers. That's to use if you don't want to cut loads of tiny little circles. You get, I think it's five note cards all ready to decorate with your collage. You get some different colour envelopes. Got some plain ones, but I've also popped in a pink one and a yellow one. And then, as well as all that, you get your sticky paper. You get, I think it's, oh look, I'm really wrecking my nails. This is great. <laughs> Oh, to paint them as I go. Um, you get six pieces of sticky paper as well, all ready to do some collaging with. So you don't need to worry about glues and sticking stuff down. It's brilliant. Um, and this kit was designed, especially with the pandemic and all this distance that we're having to put between each other in mind, because um, this way we get to send things to people that we love without um, having to get too close to them. So I really wanted to generate something where people could do a bit of collaging, could enjoy themselves, could be creative, but also could remain in touch with the people they care about. So that's our collage kit for today. Um, I'll put that somewhere nearby. 
and I've got my bits of card ready. I've got my shapes here to cut out and use as templates. I'm going to start with that big star, I think. I'm not even too sure what I'm going to do today. I think I might just experiment a little bit. And I've got my nice scissors. And today, from the kit, I think I'll use reds because I really love the idea of doing like some Christmassy cards today. I've even grabbed myself one of the pink tapes and the orange tapes to see what I can get going with. Now, I think these are going to be a hindrance for me. I'm already wrecking them. We'll see how we get on. Um, and I've got my angle from above today so you guys can watch what I'm doing really accurately but it also means I get to kind of like say hello and be watching the chat if anyone's got any comments or suggestions or want to say what they're loving or what they'd like to see less of if you're like don't use that shape that's also fine um oh I might go for this one here um but yeah so chat away if you like and let me know what you think or let me know what you're up to in fact, which one should I go for first? I'd, I'd like quite an abstract shape. Let's have a little look. If we're going Christmassy, oh, I might keep it a bit weird. I might go for this one here and then also that one to do some sort of like crazy, maybe like Christmassy. Oh yeah, and that star shape. Yeah, and maybe the heart. I'm gonna do some sort of Christmassy, crazy foliage thing. So to start with, I'm going to cut out this template here. In fact, I'll get him loosely out and then I'll cut him more accurately. I always really love videos like this on the internet, like a lot of ASMR stuff, which is really relaxing to watch people work. And um, for those of you that have just joined, I've also got a cup of tea on the go, a bit of mint tea that's in like my favourite mug that my friend Heidi made for me. So <laughs> it's going to be full ASMR while you hear me slurp and sip my tea. And right in the bottom, there's a little unhappy face that I think appears when you've finished your mug of tea and you're feeling all sad about it. That face kind of gives you condolences. It's like, I feel sad too. Don't worry. So what is everyone up to on this Sunday? I'm sitting here in my studio in Margate crafting, making a couple of, um, making a couple of Christmas cards for my friends. I'm gonna cut all these shapes out and then draw around them. They're really handy as well because I know some people when they've got this kit, they just cut everything out. So it was always to hand as a stencil. And that's essentially what we're doing. We're kind of doing a stenciling moment. And it has me in mind of some other perhaps collage kits that I might do next year. I was off at the uh, laser cutters the other day, as you do. <laughs> Just took a trip to my laser cutter. And actually that was for some um, tools that I've got in the Market Girl decorative charm kit um, that I've been doing with Turner Contemporary. There's laser cut pom-pom makers in there that I've kind of put together and designed and had him cut. And when I was there the other day, I got talking to him about the idea of like stencils in general. I mean, he hadn't cut some stencils for me, but I just really love the idea of doing some. And I was like, oh my God, we could do some really cool stencils for the Margate Girl kits. Um, I'm expecting to do one in January that might need a stencil. And also, um, I love the idea of using it for collage kits as well. How cute is that? That's like one of my favorite shapes. Um, Oh, and we've got uh, Cindy's off to a maker's market after that. Oh, after this, so cool. Cindy, is that an in-person one or is it an online one? Tell us more about it and where is it? Um, but here is my star shape. So now I'm going to take that and I'm going to draw around it on here using my very sharp, uh, what do they call these? Like they're technical pencils. They make really, really tiny marks. This might shake the camera a bit while I draw and then we do that cutting all over again but thankfully once your stencils are cut cut out once your kind of guides are cut out to start with there's not tons and tons of that to do in the future and then they're always to hand there we go and all of the um sticky papers for these kits are actually recycled like industrial offcuts from some sign makers that I know. I bought up all their dead stock, all the ends of their rolls and things like that. So um, 
even though they are plastic, they're plastic that's otherwise going in the bin. And so um, I made sure to buy up all the scraps that I could. Let's put those to one side. And actually now, even now, if I go around really neatly in like a circle, I could use even the offcuts from this, which I really love about this collaging because you can do um, some real really fun like negative space moments so if I move these all to one side you can see now if I kind of cut out all of these little triangles they're going to be little stickers in their own right aren't they oh and actually I shouldn't have worn nail varnish for this because I've just remembered peeling away these uh <laughs> it's going to be a real job with nail varnish on I was like everybody make sure you paint your nails before you craft it makes you feel great <laughs> forgetting that actually getting the backing tape off is going to be a real job with nail varnish because I feel like nails apart from worrying about wrecking it which I'm not too worried also I feel like they don't have enough like I don't know like your nails aren't as sharp when they've got nail varnish on you get this kind of rounded edge and uh it's it's really difficult to kind of chip away at anything even when you're not worrying about your actual nail varnish okay oh Oh, this is cute. I'm getting some lovely comments. Curly twirly top knot is stuck under the toddler who is insisting I lie on the floor while she sits on me to watch the Grinch. That's super cute. Watching the Grinch. Now, how about this? I've never actually seen the Grinch. And it's such a like um, contemporary iconic movie. I feel like I should probably watch it this year. But for me, my absolute favourite Christmas movie, and I would love some recommendations, by the way, if you've got any, is The Muppets Christmas Carol. Like, it's, it's definitely uh, a sign of my age and when I was born I think anyone in their 30s is like yeah Muppets Christmas Carol that's the childhood movie um and my dad the one that he watches every Christmas is mm, what's it called it's a wonderful life I think it's called it's the one where um oh god is there like a run on the bank or something it's not Mary Poppins <laughs> but um he always cries in that movie Cool, check it out. So I've got my little star shape. I'm not going to stick anything down. And look, all these little stickery bits, I can use them afterwards. But I won't stick anything down at the moment because um, I'm going to save these little bits and I might use them. And if I don't stick anything down, it means I can move things around and kind of like decide on the composition once I'm done. So I've got my nice star shape that's cut out. It would be cool if I had two already. I think I'm going to go for this shape now. It's definitely the harder one of all of them and I know it's going to be really fiddly but I'm going to go for this one here this foliage one because I feel like it is a bit Christmassy like it feels a bit like a wreath it'd be cool to do a wreath wouldn't it oh I reckon I really could as well these um collage kits make for great repeat opportunities as well so if I was doing a wreath I could do these all around in a big circle couldn't I and then have like some elements at the bottom very sweet so I'll start by cutting my template out again. Nice, nice, nice. And Cindy's off to a uh, maker's market in person at the Black Swan Arts in Frome, Somerset. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, you see, I haven't really been out. I haven't been to the shops yet. I mean, I go every couple of days to the supermarket to get my food. But, um, and I did go into Waitrose the other day that's near university to get myself a nice scented candle because you know me I love a bit of the like self treats and things I even got some like Christmassy room spray that I'm going to send to my friend and um yeah but other than that I haven't been back in the stores yet um I'm still shopping mostly online and haven't sorted any of my Christmas shopping out has anyone done some of that keen to know my sales on Margate Girl indicate that people are definitely already started getting the Christmas presents bought and things like that but it's very hard to tell how um it's very hard to tell you know when people get most of their stuff like people talk about small business Saturday and Black Friday and things like that but I still don't really know when things all kick off or if they've kicked off already you know I can see from my own sales things have gone up but I don't know if anyone's if, any, if everyone's like me I get my Christmas shopping done on Christmas Eve I'm the worst because I mostly just buy for my mum my dad and my brother I tend to kind of like get all my work out of the way and then ask them what they want really near the time and then I just go and get that it'd be so sweet wouldn't it if like I could have done a whole um 
super lovely handmade Christmas, but it just every year it's too busy. It never really happens. Um, what about you guys? Have you all sorted your Christmas shopping yet? Has it all been done, completed by the 1st of December? Tell me about it. Or are we actually kind of still catching up? And I've got Eclectic in the house has joined who has got an incredible maker's market. Now, I've been um, spotting it and uh, sharing the posts about it, but I can't actually remember when it's on. So um, if you are Margate based and you want to go and search out some cool makers to buy from, you want to definitely go and have a look. These are loads of my contemporaries as well. Really, really cool, fantastic people in my community are selling on on um, the little maker's market. I, I call it a maker's market, but really it's like super lovely designery stuff um, that Eclectic in the House have been putting together. Um, so it's great to hear about that. And I just love all those maker's markets. I think they're so cool. Um, Indietopia says got myself many new sparkly and weird ornaments also made two friends advent calendars so that was most of my Christmas shopping already done that's amazing talk about that for being organized that's so cool um no shopping here yet says someone else we go gift free apart from small children that's a good shout because like I've been trying to send and spend more on experiences and things like that for Christmas because I know I get a load of stuff that I think oh well I don't need this so much and that person's probably um could have spent that money on themselves or something um so yeah, I think, you know, sometimes, uh, oh yeah, um, sometimes getting uh, gifts that are experiences or actually agreeing to kind of like just spend a bit of time with each other instead is always good. And Eclectic in the house, um, they had their maker's market, their designer's market yesterday. I remember now because all the posts are coming up and it looks so fantastic and I was exploring that page. Um, so yeah, definitely have a look on there um, if you want some cool Christmas ideas as well. Um, I know some brilliant people that I follow like Bridget McVeigh and um, Rory and also... Um, I think even maybe Maxine Sutton was on there, but just really, really cool stuff. So definitely worth a look. Um, no shopping yet from Cindy. Enjoying a low-key, less pressured Christmas. Absolutely, Cindy. That is really cool. I think that's what I'm doing. I'm kind of like working until the end of the week of the 18th. And then my commitment, apart from shipping, we're getting to a place now where we are... Um, I've got family members in helping me and we're packing as many kits as we can for the orders that are coming in and trying to stockpile a bit as well. So slowly and surely I'm kind of getting a little pile of each of them. And that's the last that I'm doing of the kit. So things like this collage kit, I'm chatting away here, I love it. Things like this collage kit, we are... Um, I've got a whole wedge of them being made, or I'm making them up and ha having help making them up. Just drawing around my stencil now. And then after they've sold out, we're not doing anymore. I'm <laughs> moving on to the next ones. I kind of want 2021 to be like a really fresh start, brand new kits, cool new stuff happening. So, um, oh, do I want it on this colour? Yes, I think I do. So, um, or do I? Mm, no, I'm going to do it on the green, actually. Oh, there we go. Talking too much. Um, but um, yeah, so once these kits have sold out, it's brand new ones and other ones. So um, although they've been available for sale all year and I'm always kind of ordering in more material to make them up, um this time around once they're gone they're gone so that's kind of cool it feels nice for me it's not so much a putting pressure on people to buy it's more like it just feels psychologically really good for me as a creative to kind of have a limit on something and i've been exploring that stuff a lot this year in terms of oh motorbike outside it's the sunday for it it's lovely and sunny and everyone's like out and about um, yeah, psychologically, as a designer, you're kind of like, I make a lot of this stuff, I design it, I put it out. And having all the boxes everywhere in the studio with all the kit components in is really exciting. But they're starting to really pile up now. So, I mean, I've got, I've done 10 kits this year for... Um, for Margate Girl and there are so many boxes here with so many materials and we've got some planned for next year as well. I was deciding whether I was going to do them anymore but I think I will. So I've been buying in stuff for the next two kits that are going out to the subscribers before the end of the year and then I've got a kit planned in January that I'm really excited about and so I have like got all of um, a load of stuff bought for that but it becomes a lot of stuff everywhere in the studio and as well as being a space thing you know kind of making sure that you've got enough room for all these boxes it's also psychologically quite um congested you know like i i think oh i've still got to get bits for this kit and you know if somebody 
if somebody orders something, I need to make sure I go and buy a whole load in and I need to buy more in to make sure there's enough stock of it to sell. So for me, it's really exciting to be able to kind of tell myself that past a certain date or past a certain number of boxes, there aren't going to be any more of that kind. It feels like a really nice bit of closure for me. And given that I have so many other things that I do, like I'm teaching at two different universities a lot of the time and also um doing a lot of work for the television show money for nothing making furniture for clients or trying to keep up with furniture for clients because um my furniture um audience have been the ones that have actually suffered i think from all the margate girl stuff this year they don't see it as much and um i'm taking longer to get back to people because of all the boxes so it's actually really great for me to kind of go okay well once these particular designs are done and sold that's it we're moving on to the next ones and that matters a lot as a maker because you when you're making stuff all the time or designing stuff or planning stuff you do need a clear headspace like I'm definitely not an industry or even kind of like an industry style, you know, industrial person. It's all really emotive for me. So it means a lot to kind of be able to go, right, these are the ones that are left and then that's it. And I've just done that this week with the um, charm kits that I've done for Turner Contemporary. We've, we've decided on the final number and I've only got that left in the studio. And then when that sells, it's done. Like we're not doing any more because this time of year, around Christmas time, trying to get the materials in can be such a stressful thing as a maker. So the kits are so cool and they've got these, um, uh, all, everything you'll need. I'm talking about an entirely different kit. I'm doing the collage kit at the moment. But um, the uh, kits, that decorative charm kits that I'm doing for Turner Contemporary, they've got all these, uh, here we go, look, my two stickers that I've made so far. That's so cute, I'm loving that. Um, and they're gonna go on a card that I'm gonna send to my friends. Um, but the decorative charm kits, they've got um, all sorts of kind of Christmas related stuff. So they've got, for example, some wool, um, well, it's not wool, it's cotton yarn in it. And having that in a green is great and really exciting. But everyone at the moment wants green everything. So the um, I've actually bought up all the yarn that I can from loads of different small suppliers and they've all run out and then I've gone to the main wholesale supplier and they've run out as well. So it's almost like the job of trying to get more of this particular material in for the kit is such an effort. It's like, right, well, I'm just going to give myself a break and decide that I'm only going to produce as many as I can make according to all the green yarn I've got left. <laughs> so um, come uh, probably the end of this week coming, there, there's not likely to be any more of those kits available. And that feels kind of nice for me to know that I won't have to worry about chasing up um, wholesalers for all these kind of random little bits and then making sure that all of the other materials, there's about like 11 different products in the one box. So um, yeah, it feels really good psychologically to have that organized and know that there's at least a limit on production of some things, even if it means that there'll be people that will want to purchase and won't be able to trying to supply everyone all the time can be quite overwhelming all right so like i said these are made using um off industrial offcuts of um types of uh sticky vinyl left over from the sign maker so i go and buy up all the scraps it's got all these cool Appa uk five year there's probably a guarantee when you're using it outdoors but we're sticking it on note cards to make cute little cards um, so I've done my stencil cutting and now I'm cutting all the shapes out of them. And just like I was saying before, these make very cool negative space. So like I could chop this out across there and I think that's going to make quite a cool card as well. In fact, I would say that I'm probably going to manage, where's my other one? Oh, here it is. Ah, oh, hmm. did I cut a red out of somewhere else? I thought I had two reds. Oh no, I was just about to. So <laughs> this is me talking too much. So this design, I could cut this out as well and use a negative space from that. So I'll make sure maybe that I cut it all out in one go, which I seem to be doing all right. So let's give that a go. But those using up those scraps ensures that you're kind of like being really eco, you're making best use of everything. And also um, you double up on the amount that you're able to produce, which I think is so cool. Because we want that, don't we? We want nearly nothing to go in the bin. And we want all of our efforts to be maximising the amount we output. 
which is really cool. And there we go, love it. So cutting the shape out, and I'm doing a kind of uh, foliage star selection, but I want to do a card where I've also got like some of the, uh, here we go. I'm gonna, I think, cut that off and then do this bit. Um, I'd like to get some of the stripes and the dots going in the background as well. So I've got some of my colorful tape. I'm gonna try and keep these together. So I'll have to shorten it a little bit. There we go. So I'm just using at the moment all the elements from my collage kit. And in that kit, you've got everything you need, including the scissors, which are these cute little stalk ones. Meep, meep. Ka -ka, ka -ka. <laughs> like that's the sound a stalk makes. Um, these cute little brass stalk scissors, which I think historically are used for threads and embroidery, but they're so lovely and small and snippy and really mobile as well. You can take them anywhere. So if you're packing your kit away to use it on a trip or on a holiday, or um, it's really great to use uh, these kind of little tiny snippy ones. They're not just a huge pair of cumbersome scissors that you might use for your fabric cutting or something, which by the way, you're traditionally not supposed to do. In this studio and all the studios I've ever worked in, you do not mix fabric scissors with paper scissors because apparently paper blunts scissors way quicker. So your fabric scissors remain really sharp and usable if you don't use them for anything else. But in this case, these are gonna be our little collage scissors. Okay, so I've got a couple of things on the go now. I might try and stick these down. Let's see what I've got going on here. If I snip this away, I'm just making it up at the moment, and I might do a bit of this to make it an even more interesting design. Let's have a look what we've got. Okay. Totally making this up over here. You see, in the kit, there's the option to follow the guide according to all of these designs you can follow the guide and do any one of these designs which are kind of really abstract or really literal we've got a lady in a sun hat birds in the sunshine big vase of flowers some really complicated ones some really simple ones but I have decided to freestyle a bit today and do my own ones I even quite like that I'll put that to one side um, let's see now I often cut all of my shapes out. Look at that one, that's cool. I often cut all of my shapes out and then I will decide what and where they're gonna go. Um, after I've done that, instead of sticking them down as I go, because then I might be like, oh, I don't wanna do that. I wanna change my, change my design. So I cut them all out first and then I kind of do a bit of styling and composing. Now, if I was teaching at the moment, I would be telling students, take photos as you go, because it's all, I tell them like, this is design work, you know? It's like, this is a design. And then when you move it around somewhere else and include something else, that's gonna be a design as well. So um, you could even do a bit of that to give yourself ideas for different, um, Give yourself ideas for different compositions based on what you're moving around and deciding on but you don't have to keep that it could just live in your phone as an idea for your next one so i like a bit of this what should we do let me think i kind of like i kind of like this what about like a nordic design <gasps> oh that's made it look really contemporary hasn't it and that actually ends up looking like a tree. I'm gonna do that one. I wanna use the tape in the background though. How should I do it? Let's see. I might do some stripes going down from top to bottom. Um, I would go across with the tape, but I feel like it might interrupt the design a bit much. So let's get this one stuck down first. And then I'll see if I wanna do some bits around the edge. Now I wrecked my nails at the very start of this, even just opening the box, and I know I'm gonna do it again. Um, one of the ways that I peel back backings on things because I have to do it a lot you imagine how much I'm having to pack all the time on these kits what I tend to do let's do it this one and show you I'll get please excuse the broken look like messed up painted nails but there we go I fold it over like that my core one of my corners and then I drag it with my nail and you end up kind of separating really hard to see that you end up separating your sticker from its backing sheet like that and you can tug it away 
because a lot of the time people try and get in there with a nail and it can be really hard so this dragging motion I'll do it again really close to the camera look at that nail isn't that just great there we go I've dragged it and it's come away in one go look isn't that cool so I find that's one of the easiest ways of getting backing paper off of stickers um this one with all its points it's going to be quite hard to reveal so let's give it a little go <laughs> getting lots of nail varnish included there I'm gonna have blue in this design even unintentionally yeah look, I'll have to probably stick a sticker over that cool so there's my one I'm loving how this is coming out right mm -hmm. does that look in the middle I'm so pleased I did my cutting first and then stuck down second because I don't think I would have come up with this design otherwise. I was actually sort of imagining something far more traditional. Oh, so lovely. Imagining something far more traditional and less sort of, um, what's the word? Less rigid and systematic, but this one's really kind of very graphic, like straight through the center. Oh. Oh, I might have to peel that off a bit. Hang on, don't stick down just yet. Oh no. <laughs> oh damn it, I'm going to have to just go with that, look. And snip a bit there, where it's looped. And actually this is a great learning moment as well because, I'm not too worried about that, because one of the ways that it's really effective to stick down stickers like that, it's quite big, it's going to start attaching itself where you don't want it to, and I do this all the time when I'm installing vinyls at shows. I'll put, you start at one end and you fan across. So rather than trying to rest the whole thing on like that, you might end up sticking one end down and another end down and avoid the middle and end up having a big kink in the middle like I sort of just did. Instead, what you can do is you stick one end down and then you slowly go across like that and stick it in like a wave and it's really effective. Cool, I like the look of that. Right, let's get some of the, I'm gonna do pink pink and orange because I've got them both here let's start with this one stick that down like that oops and snip cute oh, I'm loving the look of this it's so adorable and then this side and anyone who's just joined we're making Christmas cards from the Margate Girl collage kit which I'm playing around with today and there's still some of them available on the Margate Girl store there I think they're about 16.50 and you can make at least five cards with the, with the kit but there's so much um, of this sticky vinyl available like you think I've just done one design and actually all I'm using is this very small amount it's really effective because you can um, create quite a few. And these are great as birthday cards as well. I sent a few as birthday cards this year. Here we go, I'm gonna do another bit there in my orange tape. You get a roll of tape, you get sticky dots, you get all like five or even six different pieces of vinyl, all different colors. And these super cute stalk scissors. Oh, I just love them. <laughs> to do all your cutting. And I picked these because they're lovely and snippy and small. You can get really lovely, sharp, sharp um, shapes with it, as opposed to something that was kind of like rounded and a bit blunt. Oh, Sharon loves my nail colour. Thank you. I really wrecked it today. Look at that. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, and uh, I've just posted some kits to you, Sharon, haven't I? Now, I sent them to Cardigan which is one of my favorite places in the whole wide world. So Sharon, is that where you're from? Or is that where you're sheltering at the moment? Tell me all about it, because I love Cardigan. And one day, my very best friends um, live there, one of whom is a girl called Heidi Plant. You guys should look her up, because she does amazing collages. I wonder if I can actually write that as a comment. Um, no, I don't know if it's gonna... I'm gonna end up wrecking my, wrecking, wrecking my feed. <laughs> but... Um, Heidi Plant does amazing collages, very, very sweet, and screen prints. And um, she inspires me for a lot of my shapes and designs, so definitely look her up. That's cute, isn't it? I'm loving that for a little Christmas card. Okay, so could I do one that was quite similar, I wonder? I've got my green one here still to go. I wonder if I could do one this way. Oh, 
and I could use the blue in the tape in the kit so the blue tape so okay let's go for a shape at the top then and it would be like that wouldn't it two little different designs um what from my sheet could I do I could do that sun couldn't I let's do a bit of that oh, we've got about 30 minutes left so well 20 minutes <laughs> So they're really quickly coming along, aren't they? And like I said, these are great as um, they're great as Christmas cards, but also little note cards. And something I always ask people to get me at Christmas, like if anyone's like aunties or uncles, like what do you want? I always say just grab me some um, nice thank you cards because it's after Christmas, January time, that you actually need that stuff because everyone's got you such sweet, nice things. And so on Christmas Day, I don't know about you guys, but I sit there with my family and I gratefully open up everything anyone has taken the time to send me. And then I will take notes about what I got from everyone. This sounds so organised. I'm not normally this organised. And make sure I pop a little thank you card in the post to them after Christmas um, because that way they can know I'm grateful for the gift and it saves me trying to remember who got me what afterwards so I always like write it on a bit of wrapping paper um in uh, on Christmas day and for that reason I always make sure I've got a little stash of thank you cards so this year I think I might have a go at trying to make those thank you cards using this little kit because all these designs are so cute and I am loving this one that I've just made like that's my favorite I love that Oh, Sharon says, yes, from Cardigan. Sorry for giving away your personal info, Sharon. <laughs> I think I think you'll be all right with that. Um, family's still there, but you're in Pittsburgh. Mum and Dad will forward your kit in a comfort package. Oh, my goodness. Oh, so you're not in the UK. You're all the way over in Pittsburgh. Oh, bless you. Oh, bless you. That's so sweet. And um, how interesting as well. So you're loving Cardigan from afar, just like I am. Um, I definitely want to move there one day. It's like such an incredible, sweet place out on the coast in Wales. And like I said, some of my very favourite people have moved there. And um, for me, I mean, I'm loving Margate. I'm the Margate girl. I grew up here. And it's a very inspiring place for me to live at the moment. Um, but increasingly, as I age, and I don't know about anyone else who's in the same sort of position as me, but I'm finding I... Um, after tranquility much more than I used to. I used to love like being in a thriving hub and places like that. But, um, and you know, the idea of living in a city or a busy town really excited me. And it's not like Margate's this super busy place, but it's got a really, really active, vibrant, very engaged community. And for me, the more I go through my life, I know that there's going to be a point in my life where I really want to live a lifestyle that is much more of a retreat for me for my brain for my creativity and that's not to say that I won't be online loads I won't always be um, sharing things with everyone and being really active in my creativity or in my kind of industry but more and more I need a place that's sort of got less going on and is more um, lined up with nature and there's more kind of tranquility and more of a recluse setting about it and I get on so well um, with my work when I have opportunities to kind of retreat and go away and kind of lock myself away somewhere I'm really really into this this um, concept of deep work and being able to intensively focus to get things done and to make developments in my craft and to discover things in my own head and in my own heart and so um, I think as time goes on I get really excited about the idea of one day living somewhere where um it's harder for people to get to and I like being out there on my own and I can kind of change the world from my studio that's kind of in isolation you know does that sound weird does anyone else get that feeling but um it matters a lot to me and I'm always very careful with the way that I um with the way that I feel and how it affects my creativity so I try and make sure that my heart is always in the place that it really wants to be in and that I'm thriving and things like that so um I think one day an investment in places that are oh look, I've just got to mark the thing I'll take my card out from underneath um an investment in a place one day that is um more out in the sticks will be a really exciting thing for me so that's where I, the kind of places I'd like to end up one day and Wales is really great for that because it's um such a beautiful place such fantastic landscapes and um it's still somewhere that has a lot of outdoor and open spaces and places where you can kind of go and spend lots of time on your own which i really love the sound of but 
don't worry everybody I will not be going anywhere when it comes to being showing up online you'll still all be in my studio in my living room in my kitchen with me <laughs> wherever I go yeah I love a bit of that um, and I get so much of my human connection online actually I think people give social media a really hard time look there I am cutting drawing drawing around my stencil these are all ready for me to use in the future now as well which is cool um I uh people give social media a really like bad rep don't they they say it's really bad for people's psychology and stuff like that and it's certainly very addictive but I find that I'm um find that I really love the connections that I'm able to make with people online and um it kind of feeds a lot of my creativity as well I've, I've discovered so many fantastic friendships and connections through social media it's definitely been something that's been really positive for me in my life but I I take care to kind of keep it healthy so I never um give myself the responsibility of posting when I don't want to and I don't tend to follow any accounts that make me feel bad about myself or make me feel like I'm underachieving so although as much as that might be a bit of an echo chamber for me I um try and make sure I don't kind of live on the space I just use it to reach out to people and to listen to people and things like that which I think is really cool and we're all in charge of the stuff that we do and what we're exposed to even if we don't really feel like it sometimes so I try and remember that if ever stuff is getting a bit too overwhelming or I don't have to do it I don't have to post I don't have to be present if um if it's not right for me and that gives me a lot of relief actually as well okay so here I am cutting out this cute little shape and this is going to be a sun but actually I think it's probably not going to look quite so much like one when I finished um and in the space of about 15 minutes which is when the live will finish I will have this done and I love it because it's going to be a cute little um Christmas card for me to send to someone I might stick with the uh, the orange tape and do some orange stripes down the side of this one. So we've got a bit of green and orange and then we've got a bit of red and orange. Or maybe even the pink actually because green and pink tend to be the colours of this Christmas. Certainly for some of my other kits like the decorative charm kit is green and pink. I've got on that one. Green and pink and blue and orange. They're actually, I've been teaching a lot of lectures to do with um, colour on my uh, online teaching for the universities that I work for and um, I've been doing PowerPoints all to do with like colour theory and the science behind different colours and um, blue and orange and pink and green are really, really strong um, oh, complementary colours. There we go, I was like, oh, I've forgotten then what I was teaching. They're really strong complementary colours, which means if you look at, let's have a look. Uh, I haven't got a blue, let's do the green and pink um and pink is actually a uh secondary color it's well it's it's not a secondary color it's a tone of red or a tone of magenta but the point is this sits on the opposite side of the color wheel to green and they really bring out their personalities of each other so they work really well together it's the same with um orange and blue if i grab some of the blue and hold it up now orange is made up of yellow and red and blue is everything but yellow and red <laughs> yellow and red so um as a result they they're super high contrast to one another and so they they sit really well together because they bring out each other's personality so it's really interesting how that affects the color wheel and i find that quite often i pick color palettes that actually are com um complementary colors sitting opposite each other on the color wheel so here's the card that I've done already I've done that using my collage kit and I've cut all the shapes out from this sheet only two actually and I've gone and made this I'm really happy with that now I'm going to do my second one I'll put that there so we can see it for a bit of inspo this time around I think I'm going to pop that one at the top so it's a bit different oh I'm loving that it's so weird and cool yep I want it overlapping a little bit I'm not sure mm. I think no because the other one doesn't do that now I'm actually going to do a little bit of placement here I'm going to put it where I want it to go 
And because they're both going to be removed at the same, when I'm sticking them down, I'm going to do a little mark in the middle from where I want the first one to land. So let's start with this one. And we're going to do that whole thing where I kind of pick away at the back. I pick, I, I fold it over and then I pick backwards to reveal the backing paper and peel it off. Cool, huh? There we go. I find the other ones with spokes all the way around are actually really hard to peel, so I'll have a bit of fun with that at the moment. In a minute. So now I'm going to stick one end down like that. And then I'm going to slowly, this is what I didn't do earlier and it went a bit crazy. I'm going to slowly stick that down like that. Like fan it across. Cool, huh? Like that. It's much more bluey, vivid green than is probably showing on the screen. And then picking away the backing on this one. This one's probably going to give me trouble peeling off because it kind of goes in on itself and then it's like, ah, in fact, if I just tear it, I can take one side off at a time. Oh, there we go. That's much better. A bit worried about that one. Oh, might have spoken too soon. There we go. Cool. I think I'll have the spoke touching the thing in the end of the leaf. Nice. There we go. These are looking good. My little series of cards. Now I'm going to go... Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I am going to use the blue because I want to use these little dots and show you guys what they look like. So this all comes with the kit as well. You get a roller tape, you get sticky dots, and you get some other big stickers which are like starbursts because I just love those shapes. It's quickly becoming like my favourite shape. That starburst that you get when you kind of when things are on sale or when you go to a fish and chip shop. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut a bit of this away. Actually, that might be alright. Just start with that end. Yeah, that's super sticky. So in fact I will snip that one straight using my cute little stalk scissors. Oh, just like the last one, do a bit of a, this type of thing. Oh, oh these are taking a minute to stick. Oh, I've lost the stickiness on that one. I might to pull a bit more off. There we go. Sticking to my fingers a lot, <laughs> not, not the card. Okay. I'm often using my nail to stick things down. Like I, there's so many stickers I have to use for the boxes. Sometimes they're high tack, sometimes they're low tack. So I do like a bit of that and rub things down with my nail can't do it with these nails because <laughs> they're all painted and crazy looking cute and then down the sides I'm going to use these little sticky dots oops this is this is the one now this will take me a while but I think it's going to be worth it because I'll do like a stripe of dots super cute so graphic and abstract i'm loving this i often do this i don't know about you guys but i kind of like i'm like oh yeah that's what it's gonna look like i sort of cover over things to get an idea of what the whole rest of the thing's gonna look like i do that when i'm decorating a room like i'll, I'll paint a little corner and then i mask the rest of the room off with my out of my vision with my hand and i go oh yeah cool that's what it's gonna look like and i get really excited as if i've done the whole room and then i lose interest and i'm like oh i'll finish it tomorrow <laughs> So yeah, it's probably not such a good thing. But here we go. Looking so adorable. And all of these stripes, I'm doing them with the tape, but you could just as easily cut some stripes using the vinyl that you've got. So for example, if I get, have I got much of the green left? I've got some blue. If I was to cut a little strip of the blue, like this. Let's see how much we need, about that much. Cute. 
cute. Oh my gosh. I'm really liking these. I think they look really cool. There we go. So nice. And graphic. A little bit like... Um, now, what is her name? Oh, no, I forgot it's gone on my head. The Irish designer who does lots of leaf prints. Hmm. Can't remember her name off the top of my head. If anyone thinks of it, let me know. But Orla Kearley, that's it. Orla Kearley. Beautiful graphic florals. <laughs> Look, there we go. Oh, <laughs> as if I've done the two. Might finish this side just for providence. <laughs> There we go. Oh, get the nail involved again. Stick that down, get some of my nail varnish on it. <laughs> Excellent. All right, now when I finish those, I won't continue with that one, but I'd have two on the go. And then, if I put them there, can you see those? Yes, oh, so cute. Now, to have a little look, in fact, I'll use that to sort of, well, I like that one the most, it's finished. Oh, look, I've got pencil on the back of that. Let's try it with this one. If I wanted to use up some of my scraps, I could do all sorts of cool things. So on here, I've got a bit of that going on, but I could layer these up to do a really interesting design, a bit like that. And actually, I loved my zigzag, but I think I'm going to take that off. Let's see about lining that up with that. Cool, check it out. And even you could even use that for something else. Nice, huh? Should I stick that one down? I haven't got enough paper over here though. I don't want to use up anything else. So lovely though. Like using that negative space is one of my favourite things to do. And even the little bits like these, little stars, remnants. So if I was to stick that down there, I could do some cool abstract designs and you don't always have to fill your entire you don't have to fill your entire card you know even the negative space of like that top end if I was to do a bit of this all the way along with the two different slightly different reds oh that's not sticking very well like that very cute and Bukia Beads has said, very Matisse. It so is, isn't it? Like any of those kind of leafy shapes just always send you to Matisse. So cool. So I've got a Pinterest board up on my Margaret Girl Pinterest account that's got some very cool collage inspiration on it if you wanted to have a look. And um, the uh, Matisse work is all on there. I love it. And um, so far today, just in the space of an hour... Oh, look, I keep getting pencil. I think I've got a little bit of lead on the table because I've rubbed it around and it's like coming off. But in the space of an hour, I've already managed to make these two cards. I haven't quite finished this one, so I'm covering it over. But I've made these two cards and I've got loads of leftovers to work with some other designs, which is super cool. And now that I've cut all my templates out, like these ones... I could just carry on drawing around these as much as I like. And I think sometimes it does take that little bit of guidance from someone who might have done it a few more times to generate these kind of shapes and mean that people can feel confident enough to do cards like this. And they're still entirely your design. You might cut these shapes out from the set of uh, templates, but how you compose them is completely up to you. It's so original to whatever you want to do and the designs that you've got in mind and your own personal style will really come through when you do that. So composition, and colour choices they still are your choice and they're the designs that kind of make you the designer not me which I love I love a bit of that so there we go lots of collaging done today I hope you guys have enjoyed watching along and don't forget there's still some of these available on the Margate Girl website 
They're just £16.15 and you get all the materials that you need, including this super cute pair of scissors, the tape, the sticky dots, the other stickers. You get the guidance, you get the suggestions of what you can make. And of course, the little intro from me that kind of cheers you on and gives you some idea about what you can do. These are just 1650. They go through the letterbox and they make a really cute present for anyone who might be indoors this Christmas, which is pretty much all of us, and uh, wants to get a bit creative. Or you could grab a box for yourself and make yourself some um, thank you cards for next year, or even just get it in time to have some uh, Christmas cards made ready for sending out to some of your loved ones for them to arrive near Christmas. Um, thanks for joining along. It's been so cute hanging out with you guys. I've got my cold mint tea now, which I'm going to finish, and um, we'll be posting this up online. So if you've joined late and are just watching a little bit of it we will still have this up on the uh market girl grid for you to follow along and if you grab a collage kit you'll be able to come back and watch on another day as well all right guys have a great sunday enjoy yourselves take care